And uh, staying on staying on Daisy actually, Andy, you you you, you turn me, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Adam, uh, you turn me on to a really interesting piece by Janko uh, at Gigaom, uh, uh, Janko Rutgers at Gigaom, uh, who actually were killing it this week with news that uh, they had lots of stuff, uh, and uh, he uncovered some details on the process of playlist curation spearheaded by Daisy, uh, which stated, of course, from the outset that this curation process would be, you know, their differenti- differentiating factor from other streaming services, and the company is enlisting both musicians and uh, 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 writers, freelancers uh, to compile hundreds of playlists on the systems based on specific briefs and while artists have pretty much a free reign uh, uh, freelancers uh, and writers uh, have to stick to a number of regulations given by the company and specifically they should avoid being overly clever with transitions that would be lost on the average listeners they should, be, they should avoid uh, el- elitism uh, in their music selection and, and avoid talking down to listeners uh, musically I guess and they should also aim to provide the best listening experience within a given context so now this sounds quite harsh when it's read out loud but having worked in content management myself i kind of can kind of see where they're coming from uh, but uh, I don't know, andy do you think that these rules make sense in the context of providing a good experience to listeners or they kind of reduce the spontaneity of uh, and randomness really of of uh, a human selection that should be what differentiates the service from the others well, there's, I mean, to an extent, yes, but I can see where they're going. They're obviously, I mean, yeah. like for, for all these services, the kind of the mainstream users is, is the kind of the holy grail and what, what people really want and need for, for their business models really to succeed. Yeah. Um, and by you know, saying, don't, don't be elitist, don't be confusing, um, I, it, it makes sense if you're trying, if you, you I mean, they said there was, that article said they, you know, they've they've created thousands of playlists trying to focus on specific people and specific moods and moments yeah. and things that they're doing, like you know, barbecuing and whatever. And uh, it, yeah, I think when you're when you're kind of going out in general terms like that, you have to lay t- lay some ground rules down, and uh, you know. It makes sense. I mean, <laughs> Janko was writing that you know they don't want any record store sort of geeky clerks in, in to compiling the playlist, but nobody really likes record store geeky clerks. <laughs> 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 At least in the mainstream public, they make you feel intimidated and they kind of ask you why you don't know about stuff that you should be knowing about because they know yeah. all about it. And it's kind of. I mean, I mean, I think it's a bit of a catch twenty two in some ways, though, because I think <laughs> the, in some ways, yeah, the mainstream consumer is is not the consumer that wants recommendation. I don't think that much, or they get it from radio. Yeah, and then and then you know people who are music freaks will look at that you know they'll look at that document and just think that's you know that's that's ridiculous. I probably want a bit of you know a bit of high fidelity elitist record clerk to turn me on to you know to turn me on some stuff. I mean, I would say that in in a way though that you know the competition from other services is so bad at the moment. I mean, I was looking at the Spotify um, the Spotify playlist thing at the moment. There's there's actually one called Beards and Flannel. Um, and uh, uh, the, the, even, even, even the images—I mean, they—they they look like something you get in a sort of a Marks and Spencer's compilation section. I mean, it's it's really bad. It's the competition is is is, is terrible. I think so. Yeah, I mean, I think another problem with it is is like you said, most people are going to they're going to get their recommendations from radio, and people, particularly mainstream music listeners, they 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 kind of get their music recommendations passively and it is just mm-hmm. turning on the radio and something new comes on and you once you've listened to the radio for a week and you've heard it 50 times you kind of think oh i quite like that song but this this have comes from a starting point of people have to go oh i'm having a barbecue i better find a playlist to go and listen to where actually <laughs> they just want to turn it on and they go here is some stuff now listen to it and be quiet yeah, yeah exactly and, and i guess like the, the the music geeks and the, the people that really know their stuff for music are probably also less likely to to go and look for playlists because they might already have a big community of people that they turn to to, to get recommendations from. So I guess maybe they're also less likely to, to go and look for playlists. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm right on that. but yeah, I'll be interested to know what's on a barbecue playlist, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, well, yeah, one size fits all barbecue playlists. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure uh, songs that has several barbecue playlists <laughs> they have all sorts of stuff on there. And-